So yeah. we go to our last okay. stop now in Iowa State University. We have two presentations from uh, ISU. The first one, Accelerated Construction of Pile Foundations by Means of Elimination. Dr. Justin Dahlberg is going to present that. Dr. Dahlberg. Well, I appreciate the, the time today to present to you a, a project we've got going on here at Iowa State. Uh, we began this project uh, earlier this year, and I guess we'll let this serve as, a, as just an update in our progress, and I'll let you know what our overall objectives are. Um, I'm going to give the, the first part of this presentation, and then Dr. Zingyu Liu will, will jump in here with me and uh, present uh, the second part of the presentation. So to give you an idea uh, of what we've got going on here, I want to give you a little bit of a background as to how we got to this project. Um, currently in the state of Iowa, a lot of our uh, short to medium span bridges are constructed, uh, or their, their sub, excuse me, their substructures are designed and constructed using this standard P10L. Uh, what it is, it's, it's, it's a steel H pile that's encased either individually or fully in concrete. Uh, to an elevation that's uh, about three to four feet below, uh, say in this case, the stream or riverbed. Um, so historically, these concrete encasements have not been considered in the design process, yet intuition would indicate there's additional strength provided by these encasements. Uh, so we had completed a project uh, within the last year or two, taking a look at uh, what additional strength the, the concrete encasements would would provide uh, specifically on individually encased piles. So that project has has led us into sort of a second phase, which is is part of what we're looking at now. Um, but let me quickly and briefly dem or uh, excuse me discuss what we did in our phase one. Um, the first thing was we developed a pile capacity assessment tool. So this was uh, completed uh, using numerical models, uh, multiple H pile sizes, multiple in, uh, uh, concrete encasement sizes, and uh, in addition, uh, multiple lengths or varying lengths of that concrete encasement. Um, that tool in and of itself uh, indicated that there was a lot of reserve capacity that wasn't being considered in the design process. And we took it a step further and took it to the lab uh, and completed some validation tests, which is what's shown here in, in this slide. Um, this is just one of, of many tests that was completed, but again, it, it provided validation to the uh, capacity assessment tool and also indicated that uh, there is a lot of reserve capacity or capacity that's not being considered in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the design process. So this is a, a real high level summary of, of that phase one, we'll call it. Um, I, again, we, we completed this research project with the Iowa DOT looking at the encasement of steel H piles. Uh, the initial goal first was to determine what the remaining capacity of pile was when subjected to scour, uh, leaving that bare uncased portion of the pile exposed. Um, what that did though is, is it, it really opened the eyes uh, to the DOT to consider um, how they might use this information in the, in the design process. Um, so they, they had asked us um, to, to look at um, how we might uh, use the fully encased piles um, or how we might address that in the design process and how they might use that uh, reserve capacity to essentially eliminate some of the substructure. So reduce, reduce the number of piles, thus accelerate the, the construction of the bridge. So the objective of our, our, our current project is uh, first to identify that maximum unbraced height of fully encased H piles. Um, secondly, to further develop the capacity calculation tool to include the monolithic encasement options. And then uh, lastly, to determine how construction time can be reduced by reducing the overall number of piles. Uh, the few research tasks we have in, in this project first is to complete a literature review and the summary of phase one findings, which we've completed. 
Uh, secondly is to expand the pile capacity calculation tool, which has uh, been largely completed, but is an ongoing process. Uh, third will be to take this into the laboratory and validate the, the pile capacity tool um, with some lab experimentation. Uh, that will be upcoming uh, later this year. And then finally uh, will be our, our final report. So just some real high level uh, literature review findings. Uh, I, I'm guessing this is um, little little news to anybody who's intimately involved with substructure um, design, but nonetheless, here's some bullet points for you. Uh, first, buckling is the primary failure mechanism of unsupported bridge piles. Piles are considered fixed at five feet below ground unless the soil modulus is very small. 60% uh, of bridge failures in the United States are caused by scour. An extreme scour can change the undrained shear strength of the remaining soil, further reducing the buckling load by 12 to 14%. Furthermore, advanced corrosion can lead also to uh, buckling failure, uh, but this is typically not a, a significant issue um, given that the, the oxygen levels at depths, uh, at lower depths, is quickly consumed and not re regenerated. Uh, and then finally here, uh, localized pile repair by jacketing. Uh, really has shown to restore nominal design capacity. So again, just some high level bullet points from some of our literature review. Uh, one step we took also in our review is to, to compare uh, the current practices within the state of Iowa to some of our neighboring states, uh, that being Minnesota and Wisconsin. And I'm just gonna show you here in the next couple slides of uh, what the comparison shows. First, uh, with respect to monolithic piers, um, primarily uh, used in stream or river crossings where expected ice or driftwood flows um, are, um, yeah, are expected. Um, the end piles uh, shown here in this in this schematic, uh, they're sloped at a uh, or they're battered at a slope of one to twelve, and they're primarily used on superstructures where the spans are less than 100 feet. Um, and then as I indicated earlier, the encasement into a riverbed extends um, a minimum of three feet. How does that compare to Minnesota? Um, well, Minnesota says um, that the encased pile bent piers, uh, there's a lower cost and they're easier to construct uh, than a, uh, a footing supported pier structure. Um, they do like that you can build these with uh, aesthetic treatments just for a, a pleasing look. Um, they do use them in, in the cases very similar to Iowa where uh, river debris and ice flow is expected. Um, their height of these encased pile vents are limited. Um, and their rule of thumb is, is 20 feet from the top of the pier to the stream bed. And that does account for scour. And then finally, the encased pile vent piers uh, may not be adequate for longer spans where loads are greater, similar to what we're seeing here in Iowa. And then uh, lastly here, let's compare to Wisconsin. Um, the encased pile bent piers, there's a greater resistance to lateral forces uh, than, the, than a pile bent. Uh, greater hydraulic uh, characteristics resulting in smoother flow and reduced susceptibility to scour. Uh, again, floating debris and ice are less likely to accumulate and um, they limit their pile sections in these encased pile bent piers to 10 inch, 12 inch or 14 inch steel H piles. And their total pier height is to be less than 25 feet. And then finally, the bottom of the wall is to be placed uh, two to four feet below stable stream bed elevations. Uh, and that's dependent upon the stream velocities and frost depth. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn this over to Zeng Yu where he's gonna describe uh, with greater detail how we've we've uh, expanded the, the pile capacity calculation tool. Uh, so without further ado, uh, go ahead, Zeng Yu. All right, thank you, Justin. So the task of two is to expand the pile capacity calculation tool. Uh, so with this tool, uh, our goal is that once the user input the, the um, parameters that the tool will give the, the, the user, maybe the design engineer, the capacity uh, per pile. So these parameters, including uh, pile cross-section, pile lens, uh, encasement lens, and pile orientation. So in this case, we have two type of, um, two kind of pile orientation. One is that the, uh, the pile 
as shown in this um, the figure in the left the bottom of this slide, um, the, uh, the strong axis of the pile is parallel to uh, the pillar wall. So in this case, there are some restraints to the strong axis of the pile. So we call it this, uh, the capacity in this case is PSR. So the other pile orientation is that the weak axis of the pile is perpendicular uh, parallel to the pier wall. So in this case, there are some restraints to the weak axis of the pile. So we call this the capacity in this case is PWR. So uh, to determine the capacity, ultimate capacity for these piles with different pile lengths, different encasement lengths, different cross section, we need to do a parametric study with finite line models. So here in this research, we there are two levels of uh, model. So first, the level of model is a single pile model. And this, uh, as you can see from the left side of this figure, uh, there are two types. Again, the, in each model, there are two types of uh, pile orientation. So the single pile model will be used to perform the parameter study um, to calculate ultimate capacity with different parameters. And uh, But we before we do that, we need to validate this single pile model. So to do that, we did divide a second level of model, that's a three pile model. And this three pile model, as shown in the right of this figure, uh, will be used to um, validate against the laboratory test. And once we validate the three pile model, we're going to use the result from three pile model to validate the single pile model and perform the, then perform the primary study on the single pile model. So for both levels of modeling, uh, we try to keep the modeling approach same. So for the steel, uh, steel pile, the yield strength is 50 KSI, E is 29,000 KSI. For the concrete uh, concrete encasement, the compressive strength is 4 KSI, tensile strength, strength was uh, 480 PSI. We consider the residual stress of the pile. Uh, as you can see, the red figure on this slide shows the residual stress distribution. Uh, the maximum stress, uh, residual stress is considered as about 30% of the uh, steel yield strength. We also consider the out of straightness, which equal to L over 1,470. Um, so for each model, we perform two analysis. The first analysis is a buckling analysis to determine the deformed shape. And then the second analysis, the axial loading will be applied. Um, and then the load will be increased gradually until the unstable happens, the ultimate capacity reached. So here are the um, final models for the single power model and three power model. Uh, we use solid element to uh, simulate the concrete encasement. We use shell element to model the steel piles. So here's the comparison of the results from single model and three power model. For example, uh, the single power model, when the weak axis re was restrained, PWR equal to 534 kips. And on a uh, three pile model, uh, the PWR uh, for the for the entire model was uh, 1,650. But because there are three piles, if we divide this number by three, then each pile take approximately 550. And for the strong axis, axis restraint, the single pile model gives 433 kips. Uh, three pile model, uh, each pile gives about 466 kips. So compare this result, we found that the result from single power model and three power model are very close. So we say that the single power model actually was validated by the three power model. So with that, um, uh, we did parametric study on the single power model. Uh, so in Iowa, there are five uh, type of pile cross section was commonly used. They are HP 10 by 42, HP 10 by 57, HP 10 by 40, 53. Uh, HP 14 by 73, HP 14 by 79. So for the, those smaller uh, cross section, we uh, the parameters is study the power lines 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, with concrete encasement lines increased from zero uh, with a five feet increment. So for those large cross section, 14 inch high cross section, uh, power lines 50 and 60 were also investigated. So in total, we uh, create one more than 100 model, and each model was run with two bo different boundary conditions. One is single strand, a single axis restraint, one is weak axis restraint. So in total, we um, actually run this models more than 200 times. So based on the results, we got uh, uh, 
uh, these figures. So this, the figures on this slide shows the result that uh, with the weak axis restraint, uh, each figure shows the result for each pile cross-section size. Uh, for example, the left top one shows the result for HP 10 by 42, the result for HP 10 by 42 pile. The vertical axis is the ultimate capacity. The horizontal axis is the concrete encasement lens. So the data with different color represent the pile lens with different pile lens. For example, the green line shows the result from the pile lens equal to 40 feet. So the green line, the data on the green line shows that uh, as the pile encasement increase from zero to about 30, 35 feet, and the encasement on 40, zero, we get the ultimate capacity at about 240. Uh, at the encasement, encasement length 35 feet, we get the pile capacity about 600. So the right horizontal line represents the uh, capacity corresponding to the 40, uh, the cross section, sorry, cross section fully yield. So I will not spend too much time on this uh, parametric study result because we haven't completely validated all, or uh, both three power model and single power model. I just show that we can achieve this, and this is a result from uh, models with strong axis restraint. So here's what we are going to do next. Um, we are, the next step is to do the laboratory test, and the laboratory test will be uh, the, the specimen configuration will be similar to those three, uh, three pile model. And with the result, once we finish the lab test, we're going to use a few, uh, the lab test data to validate our uh, calibrate our three pile model. And also then use the re result from three pile model to validate our single pile model. And then probably if needed, we need to re-perform uh, re those uh, parametric, st parametric study on the single pile model and then use the result to update or uh, Pile assessment tool. So the, for the next step, um, for sure we're going to do fully in case of pile bands with three pile. Uh, use our smallest cross section 10 by 42. But actually the length uh, uh, for the pile and the concrete encasement has not been decided uh, because our lab lab is not available for us at this moment. So once the lab is available, we're going to talk with our lab people and discuss about this uh, detailed parameters. Um, uh, when discuss this detailed parameters based on research needs um, and lab capacity. So that's everything that we have for this project right now. Okay, uh, thank thank you very much, uh, Xingyu and uh, Dr. Dalby. Uh, one quick question, if you can please uh, answer in a few seconds, this should be easy to answer, is when uh, you are mentioning a uh, capacity calculation tool, the question asking when would that be available? Well, certainly it's going to be first provided to um, our, our bridge office here at DOT, and I'm sure they're going to want, um, uh, they're going to want to do some of their own uh, validation per se of, of the tool and ensure that they're comfortable with its use. But once, once they've completed that, um, I suspect it could be available to, to others. Um, and, you know, the, the project completion uh, right now, we're looking at the end of this year. So, uh, soonest available would be probably early next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, we are at the end of time for this presentation. Uh, thanks again, uh, Dr. Dahlberg.